Hi guys, Kaiser here, and welcome back to Age of Empires 3. And first off, this video is part of a kind of a two part celebration on Iron Kaiser Gaming reaching 250 subscribers. Now that absolutely blows my mind. Uh, the channel started at the beginning of this year, and I never expected to get 250 subscribers in the first year, especially because. I haven't used a lot of the traditional methods of advertising my channel and, and getting, kind of putting myself out there. And so uh, I'm very thankful to each and every one of you that has taken the time to subscribe to the channel or you've left likes, you've left comments. It means an awful lot, each and every one of you. Thank you so much. It's a fun adventure for me to make these videos. I'm glad I can share them with you. And uh, I hope you enjoy the adventure alongside me. Anyway, here we are in Age of Empires 3. Let's dive into this video. And we are looking at the Portuguese. Now, if you've been subscribed to the channel for a while, you might think, Kaiser, we've already got a video on the Portuguese. And yes, indeed, we do. But the Portuguese have recently been buffed in a very strong way. They now have one of the strongest, one of the cards, H1 cards with the most potential over the course of the game that's just been added in, the Feitorias. Your town centers now slowly trickle all resources. And you gotta remember, of course, with the Portuguese, you are getting town centers for free with every age up. So with every town center you put down as the Portuguese now, with this Feitorias card, you not only have um, your boom potential, you can churn out a lot more vills than uh, a sieve relying on a, a 1TC play. But now those, each and every one of those town centers works as a really, a, a tiny mini factory, right? So it's a very powerful play and it synergizes really well with one of Portugal's strongest revolutionary options, the Brazilians. Brazil is a really fun civilization in AoE 3, a fun revolutionary choice. And... Feitorias makes Brazil just that much more powerful and much more exciting. So that's going to be the focus of this video. Portugal into Brazil with the Feitorias card. It's very nice. Now let's see here. Uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm focusing in on, on just collecting food, getting up into the next age. I've got one vill on wood. I am very sensitive to running out of wood and you see now that the Feitorias card has come in uh, I'm trickling in food and wood and coin 0.62 per second 0.3 wood per second 0.3 coin per second so that's really great my opponent in the red Ivo Baldo Cortez uh, he's playing as the French going up at the second age his deck looks interesting the, the Saint Suisse card is kind of nice. It increases armor and hit points of pikemen, halberdier, and crossbowmen. That's okay if you're going to go into that archaic infantry choice, but I don't see anything too terribly exciting in his deck. The main thing that I'm looking out for, right, and what I'm doing right now, I'm, I'm moving around with my explorer, just trying to find treasures and resources that I can claim to get little... Teeny tiny, um, you know, power spikes. You know, 50 coin early on can mean the difference between getting hunting dogs right away versus it taking, you know, minutes before I collect it. Right? That's a very powerful technology. So learning how to take advantage of those small bonuses is one of the skills that uh, is important in AOE 3. So here we go. I'm now taking up to the second age. Uh, Evo Baldo Cortez, he will get there first. And that's a little scary, because I think that for him, uh, the big the big threat that I've got is if he rushes me. That's what I'm concerned about. All right. So here I am. Uh, I pulled up my deck, and I was going to show off a couple of the, um, I think, the cards that are very important. I, I've built a deck specifically around Brazilian play, and I think I'm going to show it off in a second here. I'm casting a cast, so I'm, I'm watching my own, uh, my, my previous gameplay and, and uh, you know, previous recording. Um, but yeah, here we go. I'm going to show off some of the cards. So, economic theory, 
a very strong choice uh, alongside the state militia card or town militia card. Economic theory is great for just further economic boom potential. I really like that card alongside Fatorius. Town militia is strong because it gives you your town center's additional attack. Even, not even to mention the militiamen. But seeing as how you're throwing down a bunch of town centers and I'll be relying on them to defend various quadrants of the map, that's a very strong card. In age two, I've, well, I say age two, I have several cards that are used as kind of a just in case, like the 700 coin card is useful getting up to age three quickly. The eight crossbowmen are useful just in case I get attacked early. But I have several cards that upgrade my cathedors, or cathedor, if you prefer the Portuguese uh, pronunciation. But the cathedors, uh, they've got the Order of Aziz for the, well, that's Dragoons. They have several cards in H2 that upgrade their, one card for their HP, one card in H3 for their attack, and then in H4 there's a card for their HP and their attack. I've got a lot of buff cards for their infantry. Yeah, here we go. Gunpowder infantry, team gunpowder infantry, gunpowder infantry combat. So those three cards that I've just moused over uh, each make your Musketeers and your Casadors just that much more powerful. If you're able to get away with building this strong economy, then I think it's more important to get the buff cards and to give yourself maximum potential rather than stacking up uh, army cards that will give you a, a short influx of, of units at a critical moment. Donaterios is one of the most important cards in this deck. It increases your town center build limit by two, which, again, synergizes with Fedorius because you are, uh, again, gathering more resources out of every TC, and it will synergize with the Brazilian Revolution option because you'll be getting even more waves of revolutionaries. Very strong choice. I'm also highlighting here the Order of Aziz card, or uh, Order of Aviz, because... Dragoons are a powerful option, not just for the Portuguese, but for the Brazilians as well. They get access with one of their home city cards to the Independence Dragoons. And Order of Avis plus the Independence Dragoons, that's a strong combination. So I have a lot of very powerful cards in Age 4. I've got two uh, factory cards as well as two... Well, I've got the Order of V's card and the uh, Gunpowder Combat card, right, for my infantry. The more... The name of the game is Shipments. The more Shipments, the more Home City cards I can send uh, before I make the jump over to Brazil, the better off that revolution will be. That's the name of the game here. So taking a look right now, I've got 26 Vils. My French opponent has about 23, 22, if I remember correctly. But you have to remember the Coureur de Bois, the French villager, is more expensive and it is way more effective than, you know, man-to-man -man versus the Portuguese settler. So I would say that we're at least even. He might even have an edge on me. Though you got to remember, of course, my, uh, my town centers are also trickling in. Food, wood, coin, and I skipped this earlier, but this is huge. They're trickling in experience, too. So that means that I am gathering uh, home city cards even more quickly, thanks to each and every one of my town centers. That is a powerful, powerful synergy. At this point, I'm feeling pretty good because I've, I've moved in with my explorer. I've been using my spyglass, and I'm realizing he is not going to rush me. It looks like he's going for kind of a turtle boom sort of strategy, which... Okay, um, you know, that, that's an option, but I, I feel pretty confident that my boom will be superior to his boom, especially because he's playing more defensively and trying to, for the most part, sort of hide in his corner of the map, uh, at least early on. That makes me feel pretty confident. I do see on the map we have these house of, the House of Habsburg, uh, which is a really fun... Um, you know, native option. You get the Austrian line infantry, which is really strong. A couple of very strong technologies. Here, we're, we're looking at what he's sending. Uh, France is sending a lot of great resources that, okay, you know, I 
That's kind of a one and done thing. I don't I don't think that's the best option if you're not going for some kind of um, uh, if you're not going for some kind of you know power spike. I, I like to use chest cards to get to a quick power spike. Maybe you need to get to the next age, or I need resources for some critical units. Uh, they're useful in that way, but otherwise, I, I don't know that that works out for Eva Baldo here. But anyway, the Austrian camp, I've got the Lion Infantry. There are several technologies in there that are very useful. Uh, they will help uh, get home city cards faster, right? And the other thing, too, I, I, go, I went ahead and grabbed this one in the south just because I wanted some kind of military presence in this southern corner as I start to expand out my economy, right? So I just thought it was a really nice, solid one-two punch. Congress of Vienna, an amazing technology. It grants one home city shipment right away. And because with Portugal and Brazil, uh, for me anyway, the, the decks, that's the name of the game, Congress of Vienna will be very helpful here. Crown Lands, also a very good technology. Gets you more XP, and that means, yeah, more cards, right? So I really like that option as well. You got some other techs that are not bad. The uh, Austro-Hungarian Empire, nice tech. And maybe the most important thing about the Austrians is I am the Iron Kaiser, okay? And so if I get the opportunity, even when I'm playing Portugal or Brazil, if I get the opportunity to play around with some German infantry uh, and have a little bit of uh, Austrian Kaiser uh, influence in there, you know I'm going to take that. I have here shipped the covered wagon card. Uh, so I'm, I'm really doing a lot of expansion early on. This is where I feel I'm at my most vulnerable. And for Brazilian play... Um, what you have to be careful of is getting pushed early. If you get rushed or if you get punched in the throat at just the wrong time, you know, this, this is the vulnerability. You're expanding out your town centers. You're, you're going all in on the economy. And right here, yeah, he's got a bunch of musketeers, a bunch of cannons. And I think if he moves a little bit faster, I'm in some serious danger. He's picked up the French Royal Army card, and that is a really fun new card for the French. Your Musketeers and your Halberdiers benefit from veterancy. And so what that means is, if he moves in on me, he takes a big fight, and he wins, the surviving units will be even stronger. They will get veteran bonuses. And so, if I'm not careful, he wins one battle, and he can snowball that into a second win, into a third win, into an overwhelming steamroll. Right? On top of that, he's focusing a lot on these chest cards. I, I've already mentioned this. It's not... I, I don't like that. I think it would be better for him to get in some military cards to, to get a big push going or maybe some more uh, buff-oriented cards for his musketeer. You know, prioritizing a particular unit, just making them stronger. That's what I've done here. I've only got a couple of chest cards. And I'm using them to get to critical power spikes. Otherwise, I'm investing so much in my long-term potential. That is the name of the game. Got a couple of Dragoons coming in. And I am now shipping in a card of Casadors because I do recognize I've been rolling the dice here, investing so much without a military. I need to get something on the field. And sure enough, here it comes. French Musketeers versus, I've got several, I think it's ten, uh, yeah, veteran line infantry. Just walking right in and saying hello. Master tactics. But... I do have the Dragoons up. They're going to be able to swoop around and capture or take out. They're going to swoop in and destroy the French artillery. And that will free up my skirmishers, the Casadors, to do work against the French Musketeers. I'm trying to pull back the skirmishers. I want to make sure they don't get blown up by the artillery. There we go. Dragoons go in. That's a mistake. Uh, veterans have bonus melee damage. Uh, musketeers do against Cav, so that's a mistake. They should they should be pulled out. And that was not a bad fight. This could have been a better fight, uh, especially because I, as we're gonna see in a second camera, I don't have 
my blacksmith up. And because I don't have my blacksmith up, it doesn't work like Age of Empires 2, where you can just plus one everything. But there are several critical technologies in there. One of them that would have been very helpful is, I believe it's called counter-rifling. And what it does is it makes your skirmishers even more effective, much more effective against heavy infantry. Um, and so that was something that would have been very useful. I actually have a card in my deck that gives me an advanced blacksmith. And one of the mistakes that I keep making is not shipping that card and taking advantage of the blacksmith. Uh, so that's something I definitely need to make sure I add into my game plan um, in, in future AoE 3 games. But here's the thing. I have been investing so much in expanding out in the economy, and that was my moment of vulnerability. Evaldo, Evobaldo attacked me, and, um, you know, he, he threw everything he could at me. I threw what I had back at him. We both walked away limping, but I have so much more map control. The, the economic situation, I feel pretty confident now that I can hold against whatever he throws at me, and I will be able to outboom him. So I feel pretty good about that. At this point, I am just repairing my eco. And you see here, again, Cortez, he's focused in on one corner of the map, right? And he's already invested in mills. He's already invested in uh, estates. He's only got a couple of silver mines Weed. left. It's about 2,300 coin. And then he's going to have to start going into estates. And the thing is, you collect resources Weed. so much faster from... Uh, resources on the map rather than, you know, the mills and the estates. So he's setting himself up for a kind of a defensive situation that may be useful if he's expecting the Brazilian all-in wave tactics push. We'll see. But what I'm doing now is I'm taking this eastern part of the map and I'm uh, kind of turning into a military base, throwing down a lot of military buildings, just to make sure I can resupply whatever military units I need to quickly. You know, one of the things, as I'm watching the replay, I want to take a second, too, to give a shout-out to a, uh, a player who I played with uh, as I was playing games for this video. I really wanted to show off the Brazilians... Uh, this Portuguese Feitoria Brazil strategy. I played a game against a, a guy who was playing Germany, and we had a really fun game. Uh, he was a good player. We had some great conversations back and forth. And uh, I told him, like, this was really great. I think I'm going to cast this game for the series. And uh, then I went to go cast it, and the replay was corrupted. And what I've run into is a situation where it seems like if you've got a replay just titled, you know, like recorded game, the default, and then you do any kind of skirmish or anything else, and you go back and try to watch that video, the file gets corrupted. I don't know what's going on there, but um, that's something to be aware of. If, if there's a game that you want to replay and you want to watch, make sure that you take the time to rename it so that it doesn't get messed up. And so if you're watching out there, man, I just want to say, I'm sorry I couldn't cast that game. You were an awesome opponent. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, but anyway, bringing it back to this game, uh, I'm really setting up a strong military now behind the economy. I've just hit the fourth age, and I've got a couple of cards I really need to try to get in. The factory cards are the most important by far. If I go up to Brazil without my two factory cards, that's an all-or-nothing move right there, because you're, you're wasting your time as Portugal if you don't get your factories up. So I'd say it's almost 95% of the time you want to get the factories in first. Get those factory cards in. I also want to get in my um, infantry upgrade and my Order of Aviz card. I want my infantry as strong as possible. I want my Dragoons as strong as possible. Then make the switch to Brazil. I've got the Independence Dragoons and uh, the Casadors now. Fully upgraded Casadors behind the waves and waves of Brazilian revolutionaries. So yeah, here we go. We see here he's got about 
I, if I remember, it's 30 musketeers and 10 skirmishers, and he's throwing a couple of halberdier for some reason, which I think is a mistake. He might be expecting me to go Cossacks, or, um, not Cossacks, but Hussar. However, um, everything he's seen so far has been skirmishers. And halberdier get countered by skirmishers, so I, I think it's a mistake that he's going halberdier. He is throwing in a couple of falconets. Not a bad choice, and that's actually my main worry. I... Games that I have lost where I've been in this position, I've lost because the all right. opponent went all in on Falconets. And I had no response for that. So you'll actually see, I think in a second, I'm going to click the artillery building. Uh, and you'll see that uh, I am getting out a couple of organ guns, which are useful. They're the Portuguese variant of the uh, Falconet. Right? They, they, they send out waves and waves. They, they send out waves of death against... Infantry hordes. A very nice artillery unit. And I will also be sending out Culverin, which are anti-artillery artillery. Yeah, you're going to see here, almost as soon as I get that shipment, I need to be sending out my next factory. Right. I don't know if Cortez realizes this or not, as there's a train in the background. I don't know if that comes through in the mic, but I got a train in the background. I hope they're having a great day today. Anyway, uh, Cortez has yet to ship his two factory cards. Bonjour. So I think he's in trouble. Uh, he, he's Economically, he's falling behind. Uh, but he does have a massive... Uh, he, has, he has an army ball. For him right now, it's got to be do or die. He has to make something happen. And I'm a little worried that he's built the wrong kind of units. Uh, a lot of musketeer, a lot of uh, the, the halberdier. That's not going to be very useful against skirmishers and organ guns. And then I've got the dragoons covering for the weaknesses there. So they'll be very useful against cavalry, against artillery. Uh, even if the culverins don't get the job done, the, the dragoons will. So Portugal and Brazil have a very, very strong army composition. At this point, you can see so much map control. I've got three out of four uh, trade posts. I have uh, two of the um, native camps. I got to give Cortez credit. He actually has, or he had for a second there, the score lead. It's still neck and neck as far as the score goes. So he certainly has potential, but I'm starting to feel like as I'm wrapping up these home city cards that... We've, we're sort of hitting a point of no return. Here comes Order of Aviz coming in for the Dragoons. And you'll see I'm researching mercantilism at my church. Um, do not ignore those technologies. If you're in a situation like I am where the strategy is get out as many shipments as possible, make sure you take advantage of mercantilism at the church. Take a look at your native camps. Again, with the Austro-Hungarians. Uh, the, the House of Habsburg, being able to pick up uh, the, the free home city shipment, being able to pick up the XP card, which I did not get. That was a mistake. But picking up crown lands would have been really helpful. But I am feeling pretty good. I've got strong Casadors. I have strong Austrian line infantry, dragoons, artillery. What if I and this, this part is always a little nervous for me. I, I have lost games again in this position where I thought I was ahead. But I am feeling really good. I feel like now's, now's about the time. And Cortez makes the call for me. He's moving out. He thinks now is the time to fight. A little bit of a mistake in positioning. The Casadors will get hit first. But I realize now is the moment. I've got to move. The cards have come in that I want. Or at least the ones that I need. And Brazil has been activated. We now have waves of Voluntario de Patria. This is the Brazilian Revolutionary Unit. They're not very strong man-to-man -man compared to the, for example, the Austrian line infantry. They've got 12 ranged attack compared to the Austrians, I would say, like 30-something. Yeah, 33. But there are hordes of these Brazilian units. And every town center 
which is already trickling resources and experience thanks to the Fade Reed card, is now also automatically for free producing waves of the Brazilian Revolutionary Union. So the synergy here is wild. And even if this push fails, the economic background, I've got the factories, I've got the Fedoria and Power Town Centers, I am in a good spot. And that's if this fight fails. Now unfortunately for Cortez, he does not get the wall up in time. So we can now begin the counteroffensive. All of my villagers have become revolutionaries. My town centers are spawning in more revolutionaries. They've got a couple of really exciting cards that I, I just showed off there a second ago. Um, Independence Dragoons have come in. That's one of the big ones. Another one that's in the deck uh, that's worth highlighting is they have a card that makes their native units. I'm about to show it off here, I think. Yeah, the uh, Legendary Native Warriors. If you are playing a map where you take advantage of native camps, like this one, where I'm using the Austrian units so effectively, I think, uh, that card is a very powerful one as well to take advantage of. Now, I don't prioritize it because I think I've got what it takes to end the game here. He sends in a couple of Crossier, but Independence Dragoons make short work of them. At this point, he has no army. What do you do, right? And for Cortez, there's no choice but to end the game. And that right there is the power of Brazil. They are an awesome revolutionary option with incredible synergy for uh, the Portuguese. The Portuguese-Brazilian play, very strong. Feitorias, this is a very strong card. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if it receives some nerfs in the future. I hope, I hope it doesn't, to be honest with you, but... Um, I think a lot of people are saying it might be too strong for an H1 card. It, it enables too much. We'll see. But this is a very strong way of playing Portugal, of playing Brazil. Um, it's a lot of fun. So I encourage you to give it a shot. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun playing this game. Again, I love being able to share videos with you guys. Thank you again so much to all 250 plus of my subscribers. Uh... It means a lot to have you guys joining me on the journey. Uh, I can't wait to see where the channel goes from here. Thank you guys so much. If you will, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and leave a comment below on where you would like to see Iron Kaiser Gaming go next. What are your favorite videos on the channel so far? Uh, what do you want to see in the future? Um, let me know. Guys, thanks so much. This is the Iron Kaiser signing off.